Welcome to this video, where we'll explore six powerful ways to customize large language models, or LLMs. Whether you're a developer, researcher, business professional, or AI tool user, understanding these customization techniques is crucial in today's rapidly evolving AI landscape. In this video, we'll walk through everything from simple prompt engineering to more advanced strategies like RLHF. We'll break these strategies down into easy-to-understand concepts and provide practical examples along the way. This video is a walkthrough of my blog post, if you are interested in reading more details, I have included the article link in the description below. Let's start with prompt engineering. Prompt is the input text sent to an LLM to elicit an AI-generated response, and it can be composed of instructions, context, input data, and output indicator. Instructions provide a task description for how the model should perform. And context is the external information to guide the model to respond within a certain scope. Input data is the input for which you want a response, whereas output indicator specifies the output type or format. Prompt engineering is the technique that crafts these prompt components strategically to shape and control the model's response. Basic prompt engineering techniques include zero-shot, one-shot, and few-shot prompting. User can implement basic prompt engineering techniques directly while interacting with the LLM, making it an efficient approach to align models' behavior to on a novel objective. API implementation is also an option and more details can be found in my previous article A Simple Pipeline for Integrating LLM Prompt with Knowledge Graph, with link in the description. The effectiveness and efficiency of prompt engineering has led to the development of more advanced approaches for structuring prompts. Let me walk you through some popular techniques. Chain of thought or COT helps LLMs break down complex problems into step-by-step -step solutions. Each step builds on the previous one, creating a clear path to the final answer. Tree of thoughts. Think of this as an upgrade to COT. Instead of following just one path, it explores multiple possibilities and helps the model choose the best route forward. It's particularly useful for tasks that need strategic thinking and multiple solution paths. Automatic reasoning and tool use or art builds on COT. This method breaks down complex tasks and lets the model pick examples from a task library using tools like search and code generation. Synergizing reasoning and acting, commonly known as React, combines thinking with doing. The model reasons about what to do next based on what it observes in its environment. Techniques like chain of thought and react are often combined with an agentic workflow to strengthen its capability. These techniques will be introduced in more details in the agent section. Secondly, we will explore decoding and sampling strategy. Decoding strategy can be controlled during model running time through parameters like temperature, top P, and top K which determine how random and diverse the model responses are. Greedy search, beam search, and sampling are three common decoding strategies for autoregressive model generation. During the autoregressive generation process, the LLM outputs one token at a time based on a probability distribution of candidate tokens influenced by the previous token. By default, greedy search is used to produce the next token with the highest probability. On the other hand, Beam search decoding looks at multiple possible next best tokens and picks the combination with the highest combined probabilities across all tokens in the text sequence. The code snippet below uses Transformers library to set the number of beam paths, for example, number beams equals 5 considers 5 different possibilities during the model generation process. Sampling strategy is the third approach to control the randomness of model responses by adjusting these inference parameters. The first one is temperature, lowering the temperature makes the probability distribution sharper by increasing the likelihood of generating high probability words and decreasing the likelihood of generating low probability words. When temperature equals zero, it is the most predictable and becomes equivalent to greedy search. When temperature equals one, it gives the most creative output. Top K sampling, this method filters the K most probable next tokens and redistributes the probability among those tokens. The model then samples from this filtered set of tokens. Instead of using a fixed number of words like top K, top P sampling selects from the smallest possible set of tokens whose cumulative probability exceeds the threshold P. 
The example code snippet below samples from the top 50 most likely tokens, with a combined probability higher than 0.95. Now we will discuss Retrieval Augmented Generation, also known as RAG. RAG was first introduced in the paper Retrieval Augmented Generation for Knowledge-Intensive NLP Tasks in 2020. It has proven to be a promising solution that brings external knowledge into the mix and helps reduce common LLM hallucination issues when handling complex queries. RAG lets you dynamically pull relevant information from your knowledge domain and usually does not require extensive training to update LLM parameters. This makes it a cost-effective way to adapt a general-purpose LLM for a specialized domain. A RAG system can be decomposed into retrieval and generation stage. The objective of retrieval process is to find contents within the knowledge base that are closely related to the user query by chunking external knowledge creating embeddings, indexing and similarity search. Firstly, chunking. Documents are divided into smaller segments, with each segment containing a distinct unit of information. Secondly, create embeddings. An embedding model compresses each information chunk into a vector representation. The user query is also converted into its vector representation through the same vectorization process so that the user query can be compared in the same dimensional space. The third step is indexing. This process stores these text chunks and their vector embeddings as key-value pairs, enabling efficient and scalable search functionality. For large external knowledge bases that exceed memory capacity, vector databases offer efficient long-term storage. Lastly, similarity search. Similarity scores between the query embeddings and text chunk embeddings are calculated, which are used for searching information highly relevant to the user query. Afterwards, the generation process of the RAG system then combines retrieved information with the user query to form the augmented query which is parsed to the LLM to generate the context-rich response. Here's a simple example that implements RAG using Llama Index. The code snippet firstly specifies the LLM and embedding model, then perform the steps to chunk the external knowledge base documents into a collection of document. It then creates index from document, define the query engine based on the index, and query the query engine with the user prompt. More advanced RAG improve based on this by introducing pre-retrieval and post-retrieval strategies to reduce pitfalls such as limited synergy between the retrieval and generation process. For example, re-rank technique reorders the retrieved information using a model capable of understanding bidirectional context and integration with knowledge graph for advanced query routing. The fourth technique we will talk about is agent. LLM agent was a trending topic in 2024 and will likely remain a main focus in the Gen AI field in 2025. Compared to RAG, agent excels at creating query routes and planning LLM-based workflows with the following benefits of maintaining memory and state of previous model-generated responses. Leveraging various tools based on specific criteria. This tool using capability sets agents apart from basic RAG systems by giving the LLM independent control over tool selection. Breaking down a complex task into smaller steps and planning for a sequence of actions, as well as collaborating with other agents to form an orchestrated system. Several in-context learning techniques such as React and Chain of Thought can be implemented through the agentic framework and we will discuss React Agent more specifically. React, stands for Synergizing Reasoning and Acting in Language Models, is composed of three key elements. Actions, Thoughts and Observations This framework was introduced by Google Research at Princeton University, built upon Chain of Thought by integrating the reasoning steps with an action space that enables tool uses and function calling. Additionally, React Framework emphasizes on determining the next best action based on the environmental observations. Here is an example of React-based agent implementation using Llama Index. Firstly, it defines two functions, multiply and add. Secondly, these two functions are encapsulated as function tool, forming the agent's action space and executed based on its reasoning. The advantages of an agentic workflow are more substantial when combined with self-reflection or self-correction. It is an increasingly growing domain with a variety of agent architecture being explored. For instance, 
Reflection Framework facilitate iterative learning by providing a summary of verbal feedback from environmental and storing the feedback in model's memory. Critic Framework empowers frozen LLMs to self-verify through interacting with external tools such as code interpreter and API calls. Fine-tuning is the process of feeding niche and specialized datasets to modify the LLM so that it is more aligned with a certain objective. It differs from prompt engineering and RAG as it enables updates to the LLM weights and parameters. Full fine-tuning refers to updating all weights of the pre-trained LLM through backpropagation, which requires large memory to store all weights and parameters and may suffer from significant reduction in ability on other tasks, which is phenomenon called catastrophic forgetting. Therefore, PFT, or parameter-efficient fine-tuning, is more widely used to mitigate these caveats while saving the time and cost of model training. There are three categories of PEFT methods. Selective methods select a subset of initial LLM parameters to fine-tune, which can be more computationally intensive compared to other PEFT methods. Reparameterization methods adjust model weights through training the weights of low-rank representations. For example, lower rank adaptation, LoRa, is among this category that accelerates fine-tuning by representing the weight updates with two smaller matrices. Additive methods add additional trainable layers to model, including techniques like adapters and soft prompts. The fine-tuning process is similar to deep learning training process, requiring several inputs, such as training data and hyperparameters. To initiate a fine-tuning process, we can use the trainer class from the Transformers library. The trainer takes several arguments, including training and evaluation datasets, training arguments that define hyperparameters such as learning rate and optimizer, a pre-trained LLM model, and compute metrics and objective functions that the algorithm should optimize for. Fine-tuning has a wide range of use cases. For instance, instruction fine-tuning optimizes LLMs for conversations and following instructions by training them on prompt completion pairs. Another example is domain adaptation, an unsupervised fine-tuning method that helps LLMs specialize in specific knowledge domains. The last strategy we are going to talk about is reinforcement learning from human feedback, or RLHF, is a reinforcement learning technique that fine-tunes LLMs based on human preferences. RLHF operates by training a reward model based on human feedback and uses this model as a reward function to optimize a reinforcement learning policy through PPO, which stands for Proximal Policy Optimization. The process requires two sets of training data, a preference dataset for training reward model, and a prompt dataset used in the reinforcement learning loop. Let's break it down into steps. Firstly, gather preference dataset annotated by human labelers who rate different completions generated by the model based on human preference. Then, train a reward model using the preference dataset. The reward model is essentially a regression model that outputs a scalar indicating the quality of the model-generated response. The objective of the reward model is to maximize the score between the winning candidate and losing candidate. Lastly, use the reward model in a reinforcement learning loop to fine-tune the LLM. The objective is that the policy is updated so that LLM can generate responses that maximize the reward produced by the reward model. This process utilizes the prompt dataset, which is typically a JSON list of prompts, responses, and rewards. Open source library TRLX is widely applied in implementing RLHF, and they provided a template code then shows the basic RLHF setup. Initialize the base model and tokenizer from a pre-trained checkpoint. Configure PPO hyperparameters, PPO config like learning rate, epochs, and batch sizes. Create the PPO trainer, PPO trainer, by combining the model, tokenizer, and training data. The training loop uses step method to iteratively update the model to optimize the rewards calculated from the query and model response. Thanks for reaching the end of this video. Hope you find it helpful in terms of understanding the pros and cons of each strategy, as well as how to implement them based on the practical examples. If you'd like more videos like this, please like and subscribe.